Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild Players. The Lady Esther Screen Guild Players tonight. Marriage is a private affair. The starring players... This is Lana Turner. And this is John Hodiak. Tonight, Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in the recent dramatic screen hit, Marriage is a Private Affair, adapted for radio from the Metro-Golden-Mayer picture of the same name. It stars Lana Turner as Theo and John Hodiak as Tom. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Marriage is a Private Affair. Really, I was just doing my duty, helping the war effort, I thought. That night in the officers' club in Boston, I remember I was playing the piano, and Tom was there on the bench beside me. You see, Theo, the way I figure it, if one loves another person, one knows all she needs to know about one. Uh, me, him. I mean, Theo, marry me. Come on, Theo, make it hot. Theo, did you hear me? I said, marry me. Uh, marry me. Hey, Theo, we're dancing. Gonna let a little marriage interfere? <laughs> Theo, listen, the squadron's been alerted. Two weeks, three weeks, and then... Oh, I shouldn't even be listening. I came up here to see Miles Lansing. Well, he'll get over it. I never will. Oh, but Tom, I hardly know you. Three days. I don't know you, and you don't know me. I do. I know you. I know you like the town where I grew up. I know you like the trees outside the room where I was born up in Vermont. I know you like I know every leaf on that tree. <laughs> What kind of tree? Uh, maple. Oh, I love Vermont. But maybe that's because I've never been there. And I love you. But maybe that's because... We've got the rest of our lives to know each other. But right now there's so little time. So little time, Theo. I'll tell you what. What? That maple tree. Yeah? If it's really a maple, I'll marry you. Theo, what on earth are you doing with that leaf? It came in the morning mail. Mother, what kind of leaf would you say this is? A maple leaf. Why? <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm going to be married. I don't know why it shocked Mother so. She should have been used to the idea of husbands. She had had so many of them herself. Still, she read me quite a lecture. So did Miles Lansing. So did everyone else. And by the time I'd promised to love, honor, and obey, I wasn't sure of anything. And then afterward, at the wedding reception... My dear, do you have time for a word or two with me? Well, uh, yes, but I don't think I... Uh, may I introduce myself? I'm your father. Oh. Uh, tell me, what's new? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I've wondered about you these last 15 years in California. How's your mother done by you? Well, all right, I guess. Summer's in Reno and winter's on the Riviera. I can order in French and... <laughs> I can't spell in English. <laughs> oh, but Mother doesn't approve of my marriage. Oh, that's nothing. She hasn't approved of any of her own. Well, she had to agree on one thing, though. First marriages should be romantic. First marriages? Oh, I, I'm sorry. That sounded awful. I really love Tom terribly, but... You see, I've only known him two weeks, and he's, he's going overseas, and... You know, I... if you're like your mother, you never will be married. But I think somehow you're not like your mother. Hey, Theo, I've been looking all over for... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, not at all. I was just going. If you'll excuse me. Uh, uh, who was that? One of your mother's relatives? Mm, by marriage. <laughs> Come on. I brought the car around. We can make a run for it now. Now? Sure. You see that door over there? Well, right outside that door is Vermont. Tom. Tom, you're still awake. Mm hmm. Turn on the light a minute, will you? What's the matter? Nothing. I just wanted to look at your face. What? Well, don't tell me you've forgotten what I look like. Uh huh. Well, honey, it's the same old map. <laughs> it's a new map to me. But mighty pretty country, partner. If 
But I don't know my way around, and I don't speak the language very good. Now, look, tell me about yourself, young man. Uh, well, I was born. Amazing. Right in this very room. Yeah, I know, but that's as far as we've ever gotten. Go on. School in Vermont, then Boston High School. Education fair, conduct exemplary. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Now, any special talents? You bet. I can design lenses like nobody's business. Learn how to make them by hand when I was a kid. Do tell. Don't worry, I will. In my blood. Glass in my blood. Oh, inherited? Yep, from my father. It'll be in our son's blood, too. Oh, well, that's a pretty thought. Do go on. Don't worry, I will. You see this hand? Trained from birth. Only three hands like this in the United States. This one, Dad's, and Joe Murdoch's. All the others are in Germany. Stop me if you've heard this before. Don't worry, I will. <laughs> Still love me, Mrs. West? Yes. Yes, I do love you, Tom. Well, you don't have to be so grim about it. Look, Tom, I know why I married you, but why did you marry me? Well, because I love you, you idiot. The way my dad loves my mother. The way he's loved her for 30 years. The way Ted Mortimer loves his wife. You met Sissy at the reception. They've only been married two years, but you know it's going to last. Tom, look, I, I'm not like your mother or Sissy Mortimer. I, I want to be, but... But... <laughs> well, honey, you're crying. Come on now, what's this all about? Oh, I'm scared, Tom. Maybe everybody's scared when they're married, I don't know. But I don't want to be scared. Well, then just forget about it, why don't you? Well, maybe I can if you'll promise me one thing. Anything, darling. That if... If either of us finds out we've made a mistake... Well, of course, if it doesn't work out, of course, Theo. Oh, Tom, you're sweet. <laughs> Thanks. You feel any better now? Uh-huh. Sure? Uh-huh, I'm hungry. Well, you'll have to wait until the house... Well, who the devil could that be? Ted or Joe out there trying to be funny. Hello? Yes, this is Tom West. <clears throat> oh. Well, yes... I'm glad you did. Yes, right away. Thanks. What's the matter, Tom? Anything wrong? Tom. My father died suddenly tonight. We'll have to go right back. That was a pretty rough moment for Tom. And what happened next wasn't any easier. It was just a few nights later in Boston... Ted and Sissy Mortimer, Tom's oldest friends, were with us when the telegram arrived from Tom's commanding officer. War industry board claims new range finders cannot be designed without you now that your father is gone. Couldn't fight them, Tom. Sorry to lose you. Lose you? Well, they can't discharge you from the army, can they? Well, we don't need to, Theo. Just make his commission inactive until those range finders are figured out. And the war is over. Oh, but what about Joe Murdoch? Tom, you told me he could run the plant. Theo, I guess you don't know about Joe. What, Sissy? He drinks. And that, my friends, is not a bad idea. Come on, Tom, you could use one. I'll mix you one of my specials. Okay. Now, Theo, don't be too worried about Tom. But I'm not afraid for him, but me, sissy. I, you see, I hadn't bargained on this, this making a home and living in Boston. Everything so soon. It'll work out, darling. I'll be here to help. Thanks. Gee, I don't know what I'd do without you, sissy. You want to know? Mm. You do exactly as you're going to do. Glad you came up for the party, Mother. It's my first. Mmm, this cake is so good. Theo, eating again? Well, why not? I always eat. Do you want to lose your figure? <laughs> well, I'm going to lose it anyway. What do you mean? Theo! You're not going to have a baby. Uh-huh, and you're the very first to know. But you haven't even been married a year. Don't you know you can't do that? Well, I'm doing it. <sighs> really, Theo? You might have thought of someone besides yourself. I did. I thought of Tom and I thought of the baby. That's two people besides myself. Theo, I warn you. If you want to hold Tom... Oh, Mother, stop it, will you? I'm not a child. I'm a married woman. And anyway, you're not thinking of me. You're just thinking it'll make you a grandmother. A grandmother. Hey, where's the hostess? We need some more... Grandmother? Who? There, Mother, you see. Well, did you expect to keep it from him? Well, no, but I wanted to tell... Well, to tell me what? Theo's going to have a baby. A baby? A baby? Theo, have you got anything that I can use to... Baby? B baby? Who's going to have a baby? 
Sissy. I am, Sissy. I mean, Theo, both of us. Oh, Theo, darling, how wonderful. <laughs> oh, now, wait, wait a minute, Theo, don't... Honey. I'll cry hey, with you. <laughs> what? Hey, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Haven't you heard? Nobody cares. After all, Tom, you're just the father. <laughs> It was a boy, and we named him Tom. And I was absolutely crazy about him. For a year of colic and teething and sleepless nights can put a mother on the ragged edge. And just when I needed Tom the most, he was busiest at the factory. Well, I wasn't very happy on Tommy's first birthday. I felt neglected and abused, even more than usual. I needed a little comfort and reassurance. And so on impulse, I dropped in on Tom. Shut that door! Shut it, will you? Theo! You ought to know better than to come barging into the cold room. Oh, but Tom... Bolton, how's the land? I'm afraid it's cracked. Change in temperature. Oh, Tom, I'm so sorry. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. Come on, let's get out of this cold. Come into my office. Tom, I... I had to come over. What's I... the matter? Where's the baby? Oh, the baby's all right. It's... It's me. I... Oh, Tom, did I cause any bad damage coming in like that? Just smashed a lens. It took three hours to figure, not to mention the time we spent getting the temperature down to test it. Well, Theo, why did you come over? Well, I... I can't tell you if you're angry with me, Tom. I'm not angry, darling. What is it? I... Oh, it can wait till tonight. Theo, you can't come tearing in looking pale and worried, busting up lenses, and then tell me you can wait till tonight. Well, I... No, I can't. It's just that... Oh, you'll think me crazy, and I... I guess I am. Sure, you're crazy. That's one reason I love you. Do you? Do you love me, Tom? Of course I love you. Theo, what's the matter with you? That. Just that. I had to know. Oh, darling, it's Tommy's birthday, remember? Will he be home early? Well, I'm afraid not. I was going to phone you. Looks like I'll have to work tonight. Oh, darling. Well, it isn't my fault. I can't help it. Joe Murdoch's disappeared again. Another bender. Well, I didn't mean to annoy you, Tom. Look, Theo, I- I'm a busy man. I know you are. I know you're busy. Too busy most times even to kiss me. Darling, when are we going to celebrate your first birthday? Well, you're certainly a tremendous help. What? Well, Theo, honey. Oh, what's the use? I'm going home. The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. I want to take this occasion to thank you, to thank all of you who have written your appreciation of my 30th anniversary set, my birthday beauty dividend to you. To you who missed my previous announcements, this beauty dividend is my anniversary gift to you because 1946 marks Lady Esther's 30th year helping women look more attractive. And my exciting Lady Esther anniversary set is ready now at your favorite store. It gives you a dollar ninety-three value of Lady Esther face powder and Lady Esther face cream for only ninety-eight cents. Call it a gift to you, a bonus, a dividend. Call it what you like, but you save ninety-five cents. You see, my anniversary set contains the large dollar thirty-eight jar of Lady Esther for purpose face cream. It also contains the large fifty-five cent box of Lady Esther face powder in my romantic new shade, Bridal Pink. That's a total value of $1.93. But in my anniversary set, you get both, conveniently packed to take along on summer vacations for only 98 cents. It's actually double value for your money. And you know I cannot continue such an offer as this indefinitely. So I urge you again, accept this offer, my 30th anniversary beauty dividend to you especially if you don't yet know Lady Esther face powder and face cream. Go to your favorite store tomorrow and get your Lady Esther anniversary set now. And now, Lady Esther presents the second act of Marriage is a Private Affair, starring John Hodiak and Lana Turner. (laughs) 
I was still mad when I got home. Mad at Tom and mad at myself. By evening, I was including Joe. Joe was really the one to blame. If he hadn't gone off on a bender, Tom would have been home. We wouldn't have quarreled. And then I said to myself, if I could just find Joe, sober him up and get him back to work. And so I went over to his apartment. Only someone else had gotten there first. Joe, I've been waiting for you all afternoon. I've been out of my mind. Sissy, you, you shouldn't have come here. What about Ted? Ted's in New York. I thought if I went one more minute without seeing you, without knowing where you were... Oh, Joe, darling. Oh, Sissy. Sissy, I... Joe, are you here? I've been... Oh, oh. Theo. Uh... Oh, I... I'm sorry. The, the door was open. Oh, Theo, you're shocked, I know. I'd be shocked, too, if I were you. No. No, I'm not shocked. Why should I be? I grew up watching this sort of thing all my life. Theo, please. Oh, don't bother to say it, Joe. Good night. <laughs> And now I was mad at the whole darn world. I felt I'd been cheated. I'd tried so hard to be what I thought Tom wanted me to be. I'd tried so hard to change myself, to be like his family and his friends. And now the whole thing had blown up right in my face. I was sort of lost and miserable. Maybe that's why I did what I did. Is that you, Mrs. West? Yes, Martha. I've been holding dinner. Will Mr. West be home? No, not tonight. Again. No, oh, that's too bad. And on the baby's birthday... It doesn't matter. Well, then I'll just set the table for... Oh, uh, Mrs. West, there was a phone call for you. Who? Uh, Major Lansing. Miles Lansing? He said to tell you he was at the, uh, the St. George. Well, I'd better get your dinner ready. It won't take but a minute. Um, Martha. Yes, Mrs. West? Uh, Martha, don't fix any dinner for me. I... I'm going out. <laughs> Look, Joe, I don't have to tell you how I feel about you. Oh, you might as well. I've earned it. Now, wait a minute. I didn't mean oh, that. Oh, let's face it, Tom. If I hadn't been a drunk, they'd have let me run the factory and you'd have been over in Europe with your squadron. Okay, then let's look at the facts. There's a war on. You're messing up my life, but that isn't the reason you drink. Now, come on, Joe, let's have it. What kind of a jam are you in? Well, it's a girl. Who? A girl in Vermont. I met her last year, and I can't marry her. There's sort of barrier between us. Her husband? Oh, don't kid about it, will you? We've had a license for weeks. Well, what kind of a barrier could there be? I, I can't tell you. Except that I tried to break it today and I couldn't. So you went out and polished off another bottle. That's no solution. Oh, let's not talk about it, Tom. No, let's do something about it. Joe, I think we'll take a little ride. A ride? First to my house to let Theo know, then up to Vermont to get you married to that girl. Theo, honey, I hate to bother you. Look, Tom, why wake her up? She'd wonder where I am. Guess I'll have to turn on the light. Theo, wake up. Well, what do you know? Hmm. She's not here. <laughs> and us talking on our toes. Well, I can leave a note. Someplace she won't be able, able to miss it. Let's see. I know, the pocket of her dressing gown. She'll find it when she gets ready for bed. Uh, Tom, where could she have gone? Well, I don't know, but she wasn't expecting me. I guess she must have gone to a movie. <laughs> I'm going to sleep till... Theo! Huh? Theo, what the devil are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> waiting for you. Well, how are you, Miles? How'd you get into my room? Oh, I told the clerk you were my sister or something. What time is it? Four o'clock in the morning. Good grief, four o'clock? Oh, and where have you been all night, young man? Doing the town. The squadron just got back this morning. What's left of us... They thought we needed a rest. Mm -hmm. Running around Boston all night? Quit sparring, Theo. What are you doing here? Well, you you called me, didn't you? Sure. As an old friend. As a friend of Tom's. Have you left Tom? I... I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? I don't know. Yet. You mean you came here to find out? Yes. I'm sorry if that makes you angry. You know why it makes me angry. Because I worked like a fool to get you out of my blood and I thought I'd succeeded. Until now. Now I want to take you in my arms more than I even want to live. 
Well, I, I'm here. No. No, you're not here. You don't belong to me any more than you belong to Tom. You don't belong to anybody but yourself. It's part of you. It's in your blood. It's just... You dare to say that. You're a selfish little gremlin who can't even make up her mind, but just... Sorry, Theo. I deserve that. I guess I did, too. i better go now. No. Not until I've unsaid all that Oh, but I... you were right, Miles. Don't you see? You were right. <laughs> It's me, Theo. I hate to wake you up, but I've got to talk to you. And you've got to talk to me. You've got to, Tom, because if you don't... Oh, all right, Tom. I'll turn on the light and we can have it out. Only one thing. Don't ask me what... Tom. Is that you, Miss West? Well, yes, Martha. Where's Mr. West? I don't know, ma'am. He came in last night. Theo! Hey, Theo, wake up. Oh, there he is now. You can go, Martha. Yes, ma'am. Morning, Martha. Hello, darling. Hello, Tom. I, I had a hunch you'd be up and waiting. Sorry I missed you last night. What movie did you see? Uh, um, Mrs. Miniver. Well, tell me. What do you think about it? Oh, it's a, a beautiful picture. No, I, no, I, thought... I don't mean the picture. I mean about Joe. Joe? He's getting married. Married? We had to route the preacher out of bed. He was so mad. What's the matter? Didn't you read my note? Um... What note? In the pocket of your dressing gown. Didn't you find it? Uh, no, I... Uh, no, I didn't. Well, it's funny. I was sure that you would. Oh, all right, Tom. I, I'll tell you. I'd have told you sometime, and it might as well be now. What? I didn't find your note because I didn't use my dressing gown. I was up all last night. At an all-night movie? No, not at a movie. And you lied to me. For the first time. Thanks for not considering it a habit. Where were you, Theo? Tom, believe me, it isn't important. It's the most important thing in our lives. Where were you, Theo? At Mile Lansing. For the first time. Theo. Oh, Tom, listen to me. Last night I felt lost. There were things I couldn't understand. What things? Well, I can't tell you that, but I was frightened, too. Because I thought we... We were drifting apart. I went to Miles because... Well, maybe because I'm not a good wife. Or maybe because I am a good wife who had to learn once and for all... If her husband could trust her. Just tell me one thing. Were you there all night? Yes, I was there all night. But Miles wasn't. He didn't come in till four. I'd fallen asleep or I wouldn't have waited. You think I believe that? No, you won't. Because it's the truth. It isn't, but you're going to tell me the truth. You hear me? I want the truth. All right, then. You're right. That's what you want to hear, isn't it? Well, now you've heard it. And that's the truth? No, but you don't know the truth when you do hear it. Honey, please, let's not do this to each other. Oh, we've already done it. There's no use killing each other any longer, Tom. We're finished. Don't say that, Theo. I've got to say it. You see, I don't know my own mind. And that's no good for marriage, is it? Well, that's no good for anything, darling. You know, it's funny. If Miles hadn't been such a good friend, you and I might have been all right now, for the rest of our lives. And now we'll never know, Tom. Never. I'll never love anyone else. If you ever make up your mind, I'll tell you. Hello? Oh, yes, sir. What? Well, yes, sir. I can clean everything up by tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Theo, that was Colonel Rayburn. Tom, I'm too tired to talk about the new range finders. Too tired to talk about me? Us? Well, what else is there to say? The war industry board think my job's done. I'm being reactivated. I'm going back to the squadron. When? Tomorrow. I'll be heading west in a couple of weeks. So, so soon? Yeah. Funny how important things always happen that way. Quickly. Suddenly. Do they, Tom? Can they happen that way? I'd almost given up hoping it's a sort of miracle. Yes, a, a sort of miracle. What? Wait, Tom, I, I'm not sure I can say it yet... Say what? Well, it's it's like having something you always wanted. Something live and beautiful. Almost within reach and, 
and being afraid to close your hand on it because it might die. Theo. It's... It's knowing all of a sudden that there was a reason I married you. A reason I couldn't marry anyone else. Theo, honey. And growing up, just in one second, when you said you were going, and realizing that sometimes it takes time to be sure, but once you're sure, nothing can shake you. And when two people are sure that way, well, marriage isn't just a ceremony, an institution. It's it's something those two people have just for themselves. Well, it's, it's their own private affair. Darling... Are you saying that it's all, all, all right with us? And just when you're going away and, and maybe never coming back. I'll be back if you want me back. Oh, I do, Tom. I do. And if you'll just forget last night and this morning and all the things I've said. Darling, I've forgotten already. Then I can promise you, Tom, if you'll forget, I never will. Thank you. Thank you, Lana Turner and John Hodiak, for a delightful performance. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here, Mr. Bradley. We know that the Motion Picture Relief Fund and this country house, so vital to all of us in the industry, are supported largely by these radio programs. We're all proud to help the good work. And now, before we tell you about next week's show, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Thank you, Miss Turner. Ladies, thousands of women all over the country have sent me best wishes on my 30th anniversary. Lady Esther's 30th year helping women look more attractive. Many of you have told me how much you appreciate and value the birthday beauty dividend I'm offering to celebrate this anniversary year. This beauty dividend is a special Lady Esther anniversary set, waiting for you now at your favorite store. It contains a large $1.38 jar of Lady Esther face cream and a large 55-cent box of Lady Esther face powder. That's a total value of $1.93. But in my anniversary set, you get both the $1.38 jar of cream and the 55-cent box of powder for only 98 cents. You save 95 cents, practically one half. Remember, it's Lady Esther's famous four-purpose face cream. And it's Lady Esther's specially blended face powder in my romantic, glamorous new shade, Bridal Pink. You get a generous supply of both these basic beauty aids at a saving which is without equal in my knowledge. For you who have never tried these two most essential aids for smoother, softer, younger-looking skin, this is indeed a special opportunity. But such an extraordinary offer as this must be limited. So be sure to get your Lady Esther anniversary set tomorrow at your favorite store. You'll save 95 cents, and you'll benefit all summer long. Accept my offer now. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild Players will present Barbary Coast. It will star Mary Esther and Charles Bickford. Be sure to listen. Lana Turner appeared through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of A.J. Cronin's The Green Years. John Hodiak appeared through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Easy to Wet. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you, and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>